The sole purpose of this video is to provide a basic overview and orientation of your new apparatus. This video is not intended to act as or replace individualized driver operator training. Individual fire departments may base guidelines, policies, and procedures tailored for best practices. Pierce Manufacturing and Hughes Fire Equipment representatives are not liable for injuries caused from acts resulting from actions inconsistent with the information provided within this video and or accompanying manuals. Refer to the Operation and Maintenance Manual for complete details relating to the components and features of this apparatus. Only trained personnel should operate this vehicle or perform maintenance. You are responsible for learning how to operate this fire apparatus under all conditions without having to refer to the manual while operating at an emergency incident. This video will discuss types of warnings and caution labels. It is your responsibility to locate and identify each of the labels and understand the importance and associated hazards. Warning labels will point out procedure that must be taken or action that must be avoided to guard against the possibility of serious injury or death. Caution labels will advise you that there is a risk of damage to property if certain precautions are not followed. Continuous training, reviewing of operation and service manuals, developing good standardized practices will assist driver operators with a more complete understanding of the components and operation of this fire apparatus. As the driver operator of this vehicle, you are responsible for understanding the function of each component of the apparatus, maintaining control of the fire apparatus at all times while in operation, make operational and functional changes while operating at an emergency without having to read operator's instructions or safety warning labels, operate manual override and emergency shutdown procedures immediately if a component fails to operate properly. Components location may vary with each Pierce Fire Apparatus. Review the exact location of each component prior to operation. Major inconsistencies between your vehicle and the information contained in this video should be directed to your sales representative. Safe operation of any vehicle is the responsibility of the driver operator. You must learn the location and function of all controls, switches, gauges, valves, inlets, and discharges. Due to a higher center of gravity, heavy trucks have a significantly higher rollover tendency than other types of vehicles. To reduce the risk of rollover, avoid making sharp turns, excessive speed, and avoid abrupt maneuvers. In the event of a rollover crash, an unbelted person is significantly more likely to become injured or die than a person wearing a seatbelt. In the event of a crash, unbuckled occupants can also become a hazard to other occupants as they may be thrown around inside the cab. Seatbelts are required while in operation. Please refer to your warranty certificates for details and information enclosed in your manuals. Customer installed equipment must be mounted to withstand road travel and comply with NFPA 1901. Modifications such as drilling holes or welding to structural frame components of the chassis are not permitted. Contact Pierce for instruction and review of non-structural sheet metal or other dissimilar metals for modification. Follow the radio installation guide for further assistance on installing or mounting electronics. Before placing your new apparatus into service, Perform a primary inspection of key components of the apparatus, including all fluid levels, anti-lock braking systems, electronic stability control, and automatic traction control. Weigh your apparatus to ensure that it conforms to axle and brake ratings. Never exceed the gross axle rating printed on the label inside the cab. Exceeding these ratings could lead to reduced component life, personal injury, or death. Review the use of auxiliary braking systems, compression brake, exhaust brake, electronic retarder, and hydraulic retarder. Before placing the apparatus in service, refer to the operational maintenance manuals. 
information on the operation and maintenance functions for the components such as the pump, pressure governor, and foam systems along with other options is provided in either the Pierce manuals and or other manufacturer support information delivered with the apparatus. If you need more information, please contact Hughes Fire Equipment. Congratulations Clark Cowlitz Fire Rescue Washington on your new Pierce Fire Apparatus job number 36357. Please utilize this five digit job number when referencing your vehicle with Hughes Fire Equipment and Pierce Manufacturing. We'll get started on a brief orientation. Let's go ahead and start with a few images here. First let's start with the driver's side of the vehicle, full truck view. Let's move around now to the cab section and then we'll take a look at the full body area. Move now to the rear of the apparatus and then we'll move around to the driver's side full view close up here of the cab section and then full view of the body section. Let's go ahead and start now with the front cab area. We'll start first at the front bumper. Located directly in the center you'll find your PA speaker electronic siren. Moving to the driver's side dual air horns. As we move up onto the bumper extension you'll find on the passenger side Velcro tie downs for your tubbed hose storage location, a swivel inch and a half discharge front bumper, and then we move to the center you'll find also a tubbed storage location Velcro tie downs. Moving now over to the driver's side of the vehicle, affixed to the top of the bumper is your mechanical siren. Moving to the cab face where you'll find two emergency warning lights in the lower section. Moving up now you'll find your headlight structure housing low and high beam headlights. Just on the outside of that you'll find your turn indicator marker light. And then as we move up you'll find a turn arrow and then also combination emergency warning light. Moving up onto the uh, windshield, three windshield wipers across the seamless one piece windshield. And then onto the outer edges you'll find your mirror housing a flat and convex mirror. You also have an upper section convex mirror over the passenger side for the driver's view of the front bumper area. As we move to the brow of the apparatus there are five ID clearance lights and then just up on top of the roof you'll find your forward facing brow light and then just above that you'll find your emergency warning light bar. Nestled in the center of that light bar is your Opticom. Let's go ahead and take a look at some close-ups of the items that we just talked about. Let's first start with that front bumper swivel discharge. There are also two top facing eye hooks. These are not intended for towing although they do have a 6,000 pound direct pull. Also as we look this is the front discharge. It is foam capable. As we move around to the side of the vehicle you'll find your mechanical siren and on the bumper extension a side facing emergency warning light. Let's move now into the cab of the driver's area. First starting with the door panel affixed to that door panel safety and warning placard information, door lock, latch, and also manual window controls. In the step well you'll find an air inlet and also a shoreline inlet 20 amp auto eject. As we move to the base of the seat pedal you'll find when plugged into shoreline power your auto charge status center will become active. At about the right ankle of the operator you'll find this yellow placard indicating date of manufacture, five digit job number, gross vehicle weight rating, cold tire inflation, VIN number, all the fluid capacities for each component, fluid capacity, and also fluid type. Let's move to the floorboard where you'll find a foot pedal mechanical siren activation. About the left knee of the operator as we move to the dash area, you're going to start with your master battery switch, quarter turn, it's the silver switch. As we move to the right, you'll find the engine, transmission, and ABS J1939 diagnostic port. Beneath that, you'll find ABS diagnostics, DPF regen, engine diagnostics, and also the DPF regen switch inhibit. As we move further up onto this uh, same area, you'll find high beam flash, your Opticom switch, and a load manager. Let's move to the opposite side of the steering column, pump shift. This is your instructions from road to pump and then also from pump to road. You do need two green indicators, pump engaged and OK to pump for pump operations prior to exiting the cab. 
Let's move up onto the dash area. On the left, you're going to find your hazard, ignition, and start switch. They are not pictured in this image. They must have got cut off. Also, as we move down, EM, emergency master, headlight switch, and panel switch allow you to brighten and dim lights within preview of the operator. To the right, OK to engage your high idle indicator and switch. On the left, we're going to find water, def, oil, and transmission temp. On the right, we're going to find volts, fuel, front air, and rear air gauges. As we look to the center, the tachometer and speedometer directly in the center. We do have diagnostic information will display above and also below and in the highlighted area for data information. Let's go ahead and move just to the right of this location where you'll find a video screen. This is for your backup camera. Also a push to apply windshield wiper fluid and window wiper control speed. Some switch locations here, which I have a close up. We'll talk about those in just a few moments. Also your system parking brake. It is the yellow diamond pull to apply and push to reset. A push button transmission digital readout with an informational note here to pump in drive. And then also mirror controls down at the very bottom. Close up once again, this is your back camera monitor. As we move down, we have your retarder switch for on and off, retarder auto apply, a red identifying switch here for your siren brake, that's for your E2 QB mechanical siren, mirror heat, work lights, and perimeter lighting. Let's go ahead and move uh, just down on this area where you'll find your system parking brake, Allison transmission pad, push button, once again, pump and drive. Flat and convex mirror controls, just down on the lower right hand side. Air conditioning, heat, and defrost located in the switch panel above. And then as we move overhead, I would like to direct you to this yellow placard indicating the height of the vehicle, 10 feet 5 inches, length of the vehicle, 31 feet 1 inch, gross vehicle weight rating, 43,500 pounds. If you make any adjustments to your vehicle that may change any of these, please update this placard. Also some switching here, emergency master, roof light, front, side, lower, and upper rear warning lights. Let's move just to the right of this location where you'll find your front scene, driver side scene, passenger side scene, and rear scene. When any switch has been activated, the green light will illuminate inside the switch area. To the right, you'll find your code three electronic siren. This is also your PA system module. Traffic advisor. As we move further to the right, you'll also find your go light. This is the light on top of the vehicle, on off switch, and then control. As we move to the center area of the cab, in the very top section, you'll find your seatbelt information and then also a light indicating do not move your apparatus. You may have a compartment door or ladder rack down. As we move to the seatbelt, red indicating someone is in the seat and not belted. Green indicating they are in the seat and belted. Let's move directly behind the driver's seat. When plugged into shoreline power, this outlet is active, allowing your auto charge to activate and charge batteries. Let's go ahead and move exterior directly behind the driver's seat. You'll find SCBA storage location. As we move inside this compartment, you'll find at the top section 12 volt access. This is a breaker panel. Also, your SCBA uh, device does allow it to uh, tilt downward to gain access to a lower position that cables but releases it. As we move down, we've got Michelin tires and Alcoa wheels. Let's move to the rear section of the cab. Let's go inside. Once again, affixed to the door panel, you're going to find all of our safety and warning placard information, door lock and latch, and also manual window controls and a grab handle. As we look overhead, push on and off white or red lens lights, air conditioning unit, and then also your uh, Firecom headset systems hangers. As we move just in front of the engine area or to the rear of the engine, you'll find a access door for daily checks for oil and transmission, quick view of the rear wall, two center mounted SCBA seats, and then two fold down seats on the outer edge. Overhead, once again, push on and off red or white lens and then also your Firecom system. Let's move exterior now to the section just behind the pump panel. We'll start in this area, first with the number one cross lake, foam capable. And then also a warning placard, uh, because of those lines coming out, there is the possibility of entanglement. This is actually on the rear section of the cab, additional storage. As we move over the pump panel, we have additional storage and a shelf in the very top section. 
Let's go ahead and start now with the pump panel area. Starting first on the left, we've got a placard for your Foam Pro system. This is the specifications and also operating instructions. In the gray module, you're gonna find your master intake gauge. To the right of that, your master discharge gauge. In between the two of those are the test gauge ports for vacuum and pressure. They're currently plugged and these are utilized for testing purposes. Let's move down to the red area, which is the foam system area. You'll find your control module here in the blue module. As we move to the right, you'll find the foam level indicator for tank A, which is your foam tank. Moving to the right, your pressure throttle governor. Just underneath that, you're gonna find a black speaker. That is an audible alarm. The outer edge of that bezel allows you to brighten or dampen the sound. To the right, we have an okay to pump indicator and then also a spare and panel lights. Let's move downward on the pump panel itself. We'll start first down in the lower section with our discharges. All of them are color coded, indicating also with the red placard, foam capable. If it does not have the foam placard, it is not a foam capable discharge. As we move to the right, you'll find the number one discharge. This is for the rear, and then also a 2.5 condo discharge. Moving to the very far right, we have the engine cooler. That's a twist, not a pull. Let's move down where we'll find your water tank level indicator module. It's the blue water level indicator. Also, we have the tank fill and recirculating line. And just beneath that, you'll find the tank to pump. Moving to the right, you'll find your fire pump primer. It's a push to prime air prime, which we do have some priming instructions, 1000 RPMs for best practices while engaging the primer. As we move to the right, you'll find a warning placard regarding fall hazard. Always face the vehicle while climbing onto it. Let's move further down on the pump panel. There are two two and a half inch discharges located on this side. Also a warning placard regarding pressure hazard. Caps may be under pressure. Be cautious when opening them. Let's move just to the right. This is your large diameter pump inlet. We do have a task force tip uh, attachment located here. To the right, a couple placards. This is your minimum operation maintenance schedule and testing placard. Also, only trained personnel should operate this piece of equipment and that's only after receiving proper training. The red placard is your watcher's placard indicating the type of pump that you have. Let's go back to the Pierce uh, placard here regarding the minimum operation maintenance schedule for 150, 200, and 250 PSI. On the left-hand side is the associated test pressure for GPM. On the right is the associated RPM at test pressure. We do have a govern speed 2100 and also the five-digit job number in the upper left. Your pump capacity is 1500 GPM at draft. As we move down, you'll also find color-coded and labeled discharge drains and also a driver's side auxiliary two and a half inch female inlet ball valve locally controlled. Let's move just to the right of this location where you'll find your main pump drain and then just underneath that you'll find the manual pump shift. Let's move down into the running board area where we have a cutout for hose storage, dry deck material on the bottom and then also velcro tie downs to secure the hose. As we move to the next compartment, we're going to find ventilation located in these compartments and also uh, LED strip lighting. As we move to the bottom, you'll find a pullout tray, the release mechanisms located on the right hand side. Also some SCBA bottle storage here. In addition, we have DuraSurf located in the bottom to protect the bottles. As we move just in front of the rear axle, this is the fill location for your DEF. It's the blue cap. And then also you'll find two SCBA bottle storage locations with retaining straps and DuraSurf. Underneath that, we have your ultra low sulfur diesel fill. It is the silver cap. We do have a tool board in the upper portion. On the back side is the release mechanism to restore that in a locked position. Also 12 volt access breaker panel in the very top section. Quick look here at your eight gallon US DEF tank. As we move down to the rear axle, you'll find, once again, Michelin tires and Alcoa wheels. Back up to the rear section of that axle where you'll find SCBA bottle storage and then also your fill location. Once again, ultra low sulfur diesel fill only. Let's move to the rear compartment. Once again, adjustable shelving, dry deck material in some of those shelving compartments full view of all compartments open here from the driver's side. 
Let's go ahead and move around to the rear section of the apparatus. We'll identify a few items within this area. Just a quick look here. This is the left side where we've got some emergency lights, also some rear-facing floodlights and scene lights. Uh, as we move to the uh, bottom section, we're going to find a fall regarding always face the vehicle when climbing on and off. Also a warning regarding entanglement hazard lines because they come from aloft, there is the possibility of entanglement. We have two additional rear discharges located here, the number one and then also the two and a half inch condo. A recessed reverse camera located here just above um, the traffic advisor, which is across the bottom section. A couple of warning placards here also, once again, uh, caps may be under pressure. Be cautious when opening those caps. And then also never ride on the vehicle while that vehicle is in motion. Let's move uh, just from this location uh, downward uh, to the rear compartment. We have additional storage here at the very rear section of the apparatus. As we move up to the side portion of the apparatus, we have long handled tool storage and then also folding attic ladder. General view here of the side of the vehicle from the passenger side perspective, we're going to start at the very rear section of the apparatus and work through all of the compartments moving forward. Um, let's go ahead and take a look inside the compartments. Release mechanism for this tray down on the lower right hand side. We also have a tool board located on the left. There is a release mechanism also on it at the very bottom section. As we move to the forward section in the same compartment, you'll also find an additional pull-out tray release mechanism located on the lower right. We're now just above the rear axle where we have SCBA bottle storage in front of and rear of the axle. Also a split compartment here where we have a pull-out tilt downward tray. At the top side of that, you'll also find 12 volt access here. As we move to those bottle storage, you'll find three SCBA bottle storage with uh, retaining straps and DuraSurf. Once again, quick shot of the rear axle, Michelin tires, Alcoa wheel. And this is the front section of the axle, just in front of the axle, I should say, um, SCBA bottle storage. As we move to the next section, I would like to point out a couple items here. Um, first, let's start with the compartments themselves. Pull out tray, release mechanism on the lower right. This is also the same location at the bottom of this where your diesel exhaust exits. This is extremely hot diesel exhaust. Be cautious where you park your vehicle. As we move forward to that location to the pump panel on the passenger side, we'll identify a few items. Let's start at the very top section where we have your folding ladder at the top section and then also backboard storage. This is going to be your equipment rack hydraulic reservoir. It calls for a specific hydraulic fluid. Also, once again, a reminder, when climbing on the vehicle, always face the vehicle. As we move down, you'll find your cab lift. There are instructions for its operations to raise and lower. You'll also find your powered equipment rack operation. There's an on-off switch and then also up or down on that lift switch. Uh, we do have some placards here regarding caution and danger. Please visit those uh, placards for your safety. Once again, an additional placard here regarding pressure hazard. This is just above the large diameter discharge and then also the two and a half inch passenger side discharge. We're referencing here the passenger side auxiliary, two and a half inch female, and then at the very bottom section, the cutout tray here for hose storage with retaining straps. Same configuration as we have on the passenger side, additional storage and then also the crosslay housing the number two crosslay, foam capable, also a warning regarding entanglement hazard. Um, this is just to the rear section of the cab, additional storage. As we move to the rear section of the cab now, let's go inside the cab area. Once again, affixed to the door panel, we're gonna find all of our safety and warning placard information, also door lock and latch, manual window control, and a grab handle. Overhead, push on and off red and white lens. Also, you'll find your headset system. We have two forward-facing SCBA seats on the outer edges. We have two additional drop-down seats. As we move in between the cab and the uh, passenger seat, you'll find additional storage location just over the front axle, 12-volt access at the very top section, uh, Alcoa wheels and Michelin tires once again. There is a sight gauge for your center axle located in the center of that wheel. As we move to the passenger seat, affixed to the door panel, safety and warning placard information, door lock and latch, window control via manual window. 
There is a red grab handle. This is for gaining access in and out of the cab as a pull strap. Also the fill location for your windshield wiper fluid reservoir and then also a map book or resource holder in the very center section. As we move up to the uh, top section, or I should say behind the driver's seat, is where you're going to find uh, an additional 12 volt access panel. Now let's go back to the front dash area where you're going to find your siren brake, mechanical siren, and then also 12 volt access via USB. As we look under the pedestal or seat of the passenger, you'll find a glove box area for storage. As we move overhead in the passenger side, push on and off white and red lens. Let's identify a few items here. We have a go light control module, on off switch, and then also control joystick. As we move to the center, you'll find front scene, driver side, passenger side, and rear scene switch controls. You'll also find the module for your Firecom system. As we move just to the left of this location, we have a digital readout for your speedometer and then also your wireless system for your Firecom wireless base station. As we move just to the left of the dash, you will find these red candy cane style warning placards. These are simply indicating that there is spare wiring. It indicates the type of spare wiring that's located here and also an option number. Let's go ahead and move to the equipment rack. This is your ladder equipment rack. You'll find a 24 foot extension and a 14 foot roof ladder. And then let's go ahead and go onto the top section of the body area where you'll find at the top two hose bed dividers. Moving around to the front section of the dunnage area, which is just in front of the hose bed. This is where we're going to find our water tank, top fill, and then also your class A foam tank. Just a couple of pointers here. We do have some warning placards here. What I would like to point out on the foam tank is do not mix different brands or consistencies of foam for the possibility of foam failure. In that area near the master stream device, you'll find yellow diamonds indicating the edge of the walking surface for personnel. As we move to the forward section of the cab, this is a non-walking surface, and that's why we have these placard indicating that it's a non-walking surface because it may be slippery. As we move in between the cab and the dunnage area, you'll also find a cover for your cross lays. On the outer edge of the body, you'll find two side-facing LED lights on the passenger and then also on the driver's side. The next several images are going to be that of the cab tilted in the upward position. You will find some additional warning placards in these areas also. Your vehicle is equipped with a TAC 4 front independent front suspension. Additional warning here regarding the fan shroud and movement with the belt. Be cautious when the engine is in operation. Let's go ahead and take a look. We're on now the driver's side of the vehicle. I would like to point out this is also the location when the cab has been fully tilted. This is the safety bracket arm that goes into place. As a reminder, this is purely designed as a safety. You should not lower the cab onto this device.
Congratulations, Clark Cowlitz Fire Rescue Washington on your new Pierce Fire Apparatus, job number 36357. If you have any questions regarding your vehicle, please contact your Hughes Fire sales representative. Thank you and congratulations.